ओके सो वी आर गोइंग टू बी क्रिएटिंग हिम द मंकी द लुफी द पायलट किंग यस सो आई सक एट इंट्रोज एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट वी आर जस्ट गोना गेट स्टार्टेड well the first step is we are going to be looking at some references and we have the reference for skull we have reference for luffy because we are going to be combining both of these and also we have the reference for hector from coco movie one of my favorites actually so yes we are going to be taking some inspiration from these references and uh, now one of the most important thing when you are stylizing your character is to simplify your forms you can see even in the figure in the reference that we have you can see how simple all the shapes are and if you want to compare this with the real skull that we have uh, you are going to realize how simple the shapes on luffy sculpture is so if you just look at the eye socket you're going to realize how simple and round it is so basically that's what we need to keep in mind while we are going to be sculpting in as well The next thing would be to look at the proportions. In this case, you're going to realize how big the mouth is and how big the teeth is. So that is something we need to keep in mind. Also, how narrow the nose is. Just look at all these proportions and make sure that the stylized Luffy skull that we are going to be creating is going to have all this as well. Now let's just look at some of the shapes that we have in the real skull that we need to eliminate so that you can clearly see these shapes, these volumes that I'm doing right now. does not need to be present in the luffy's stylized skull so we are going to have to just eliminate these and make them as simple as we possibly can make them because i've already talked about it stylization means simplification and that's what we want one of the best way to look at the references is to look at the silhouette of your object and compare that with the negative spaces that you have in the background so yes this is actually one of the best way trust me it is one of the best tip that you are going to get so follow that now let's just look at the hector and we basically have the same thing going on all the complicated shapes have been simplified in order to stylize him so we are also going to be using the same theory and try to make our own skull as well now that we know that let's actually just jump into blender and let's get started Now this is a time lapse and I am going to be giving you a commentary over these videos so if there is something that is not in sync that I am kind of sorry for that but yes let's just continue doing the work Obviously the first thing we need to do is to add the sphere and create a helmet like shape because the best way to create a skull is to start with the primary shapes and the secondary shapes and then the tertiary shapes in our case we don't have tertiary shapes we only have the primary and secondary shapes so let's actually get started with the primary shape and i'm going to do that right now as i've talked about that we are going to be creating the helmet shape first so that is what i'm doing and then i'm just going to be start looking at my skull references and i am going to be try to mimic what i am looking in the reference so for the skull the best shape the best primary shape is a helmet kind of a shape that's why i'm actually creating a helmet Now let's make the lines for the jaws and then straighten them out. Also remove the extra volume that you have underneath because it is a skull and we don't have any volumes there. So yes, just remove those. Now according to anatomy, the jaws come in the middle of the skull. So we are going to be creating a line in the middle as well and we are just going to be removing the extra bit of volume. The next step is to add the eyes, the nose and the mouth. then we can just move stuff around in order to fix all the proportions and in order to fix all the volumes so that's basically what the plan is simultaneously we are going to be start removing all the volumes so that it actually looks like a skull you can see that we have created the eyes the nose and the mouth but obviously right now the skull is not looking really good because we have to first change the proportions we have to change the volumes right now we have to change everything but uh, we also need to polish it in order to make the skull look better so a little bit of refinement is actually needed the easiest way to figure out whether the sculpture is working or not is to just compare it with the reference and you can clearly see in this case the bigger shapes are not accurate to the luffy's so we are going to have to make our skull a little bit more conical just like we have in the reference so basically the idea here is to just match him as close to the reference as we possibly can So you can see that I'm trying to remove all the complicated stuff in the skull and just trying to simplify everything. The next step is to just separate out the upper and the lower part of the skull so that it would be easier for me to sculpt both of these and this is also going to make them look closer to the skull. 
Okay, now that we have the skull, it is time to do the polishing and in the polishing we are going to look at the silhouette and figure out whether the curvature is smooth or not and with this drawing you can figure out what I'm talking about. Now I'm just going to try to make sure that the silhouette and the curvature in the skull are as smooth as I can possibly make them. Let's just add the hat as well cause why not. But the main idea is to polish him until we are satisfied with the skull itself and that's what we are gonna be doing right now. This is also the time that we start creating the teeth so that it obviously looks better. I want to say something that Raphael Gracetti actually have talked about and that something is the colors. The color itself is an important part of the design. So we are going to be doing the same and we are just going to give him a little bit of color so that uh, we can basically just make him look a little bit better. In the sculpt mode itself we have a new brush called paint and we are going to be using that brush in order to paint him. After a little bit of polishing we are done with the skull so now we can actually just continue the ribcage and the backbone. For both of these parts I am going to start with a proxy mesh so that I can get better idea for the volume of the ribcage and the backbone. After that I am going to start adding the individual bone for the ribcage and for the backbone. After the ribcage we are obviously going to be creating the backbone and for that I'm just going to be creating a simple bone and then I'm just going to be duplicating it and create a backbone out of it. At this point the only thing I need to do is to polish all this stuff and we are going to have ribcage and our backbone and our skull. The next thing would be to add the eyes and it is actually pretty simple I just added a sphere. I duplicated the sphere, increase its size, basically push the corner a little bit back also you can see I have added the camera to see how it is looking from the camera view. The next thing was to create the hat and in order to do that I have created this part and I am going to be using the array modifier and the curve modifier in order to put this part onto a proxy hat that we have created earlier and basically create a detailed version of it which is also a stylized version. I am going to repeat the same thing in order to create the outermost part of the hat as well. Let's just do the same thing for the top part. Now we have the hat but there is one thing that we need to do and that one thing is to do a little bit of randomization which I added by going into the sculpt mode and just edit that randomization manually. We are getting closer to our final result and the next step would be to create the hairs so that's what we are going to be doing now. In order to create the hairs we are going to be using the curve and in the setting of the curve object we are going to go to our geometry tab and then in the bevel tab just increase the depth and you are going to get some volume in your curve. You can press ctrl a in order to increase or decrease the radius of a point in the curve itself and uh, in order to create a pointy hair so we are going to be using that and now we have the curve that we can actually just place in order to create the hairs. After the placement of the hairs, we are going to be start doing the sculpting and start adding the details to the hairs. Just repeat the same thing for all the hairs and polish them as well obviously then you'll be done with the hairs and the next thing would be the clothes. So for the clothes again we are going to start with a sphere and then just create a primary shape from it. We are going to make sure that it does not penetrate the ribs and then we are just going to create the arms as well. Now I'm going to mark the part of the cloth that we don't need and then we are going to be drawing a face set so that we can actually just delete it. After this process because we cannot use the remesh on this object and the reason is it is a plain object and remesh just does not work. We're gonna have to use the dynamic topology in order to increase its polygon count and after that we are just need to start sculpting on this object and basically create a good looking cloth. At this point we are done with the bigger shapes and now it is time that we start adding all the wrinkles that we can see in the references. Whenever I feel like I don't have enough resolution I'm just using the dynamic topology in order to increase the volume count and uh, after that you only need to do the wrinkles and you'll be good to go. After you are done with the wrinkles sculpting and basically done with the clothes itself just add the thickness modifier which is a solidity modifier and uh, the reason is we are going to be preparing it for the 3D printing and you have to have some volume in order to 3D print something. So the clothes have been created but not the buttons so we are going to have to do that and uh, the buttons are actually pretty simple so I think you should be able to just create those and uh, yep I'm not even gonna explain what I'm doing.
Oh, by the way, do you know Indians are the one who invented the buttons? So that's actually a cool fact I just wanted to share. And uh, now let's just continue. In order to place the button, I am going to be enabling the snapping and I'm going to be using the align rotation to target so that the button just automatically align itself with the cloth. But it is not perfect, so I have to fix it manually. And uh, there we go, we have the buttons as well. And uh, at this point, we are done with the modeling. And now the next thing would be to start the texturing process. So for the texture painting, we are going to be using the sculpt mode and not the texture paint mode. The reason is texture paint mode is super slow and laggy. So yes, we are going to be using the sculpt mode for that reason. The texturing itself is super, super casual. Anyone can do it. I'm not really going to do anything super specific. Everything that you are seeing in the texture is pretty casual. I'm literally just creating fishes because obviously he's Luffy and I'm just making the stuff like a normal kid would have sculpted or painted. And uh, this is basically what the idea is. I am just adding all this stuff. I even don't know what this actually is. If I'm being honest, I'm just trying to create something that looks good. And I think it is looking good. So that's what I'm doing right now. And obviously because he's Luffy, I'm also adding the fishes and I'm also adding his logo. Yes, just do the same thing with the lower skull and the clothes as well and then you'll be done with the texturing. So the only thing that we need to do now is to use these textures and create a material out of it. For the material, we are going to be using the attribute node and we are going to be using a color ram node in order to control the colors. And I'm just going to be plugging that in into the base colors. So this is pretty much what the material is, nothing special. I've did the same thing with all the materials so just showing you one is I think good enough and uh, that's how I have created the material. The next thing and the final thing would be to do the lighting and then we'll be done with this piece and we can just move on with our life. So for the lighting I wanted to do a three point lighting and if you don't know what uh, three point lighting is then I'm not really going to explain you in details but basically you have a key light which is going to be your main light, a rim light that separates your object with the background and a fill light that fills your dark area. So this is the lighting setup that I'm going to be using and I'm also going to be adding a light on top just to, for the sake of experimentation. And uh, if you want to learn lighting in details, you can either just go to any other YouTube videos or uh, just basically go to, you know, other YouTube videos because I'm not really going to be explaining you in details. So you can see the first light is on the top. This is the experiment light that I wanted to add. And the bigger your light is, the softer your shadows are going to be. That's basically what's happening right now. After that, you can see that I'm going to be adding the key light, the rim light and the fill light. So you also can see that uh, we don't have the colors present in this particular example. And uh, this is also an experimentation that I wanted to do. I wanted to see how he is going to look without all the colors but yes we have the two version and if you want to see the full resolution version of uh, this black and white Luffy then you can actually just follow me on Instagram because this is going to be the place where I am going to be uploading both of these renders so yes if you want to see the black and white version of him just follow me on Instagram as well. And while I was talking, I basically have just did the lighting and there you have it. This is basically the lighting that I've did. And the only thing that is need to do is to create the background and then we'll be done. For the background, I just added these planks and this is pretty much for it for the background. I've just created them yellow and I did some lighting in between. And in order to create the bokeh effect, I added the icospheres and did the emission and uh, also just place them wherever I have some holes. So this was pretty much it for this whole process. I've also did some compositing in Photoshop which consists of brightening it up and increasing the saturation. That's pretty much what I've did. So I don't think that I need to show you that. And yes, we are done with this piece. So in the end, I just wanted to say if you like the video, like, share and subscribe, obviously. But there is one more thing. If you want to learn all this process step by step, then this is also a course and you can find the link in the description. So yes, I hope that you have learned something and I'm just going to see you in the next one. Bye bye. Please check out the course.